So we're going to now put all of this together and graph this polynomial. So we're going to try and pull all the information that we learned, and it was a lot, to try and figure out how to graph this polynomial. Now, you could, if you want to, go through and expand out the polynomial, but it's not necessary. I'm going to say that again. You don't have to expand this out. If you want to, go for it, but it's not going to help you. Because what to help us, we need to have it in factored form. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine what the roots are of this polynomial. And the roots are where is y equal to 0. So what makes y equal to 0? And this is just like we solve polynomial equations. Well, y is going to equal 0 when x equals 3, when x equals negative 2, and when x equals 1. Those are our roots. So what we can do in our graph is we can put those points on our graph. So we know something's going to happen at x equals 3. We know something's going to happen at x equals 1. And we know something's going to happen at x equals 2. The other thing that we can tell just by looking at this is that the root x plus 2 has a multiplicity of 2. So at negative 2, what's going to happen is we're going to, gonna, we're going to have this bounces off. I'm just going to call it bounce. Also sometimes called a double root. So again, there's going to be two terminologies there. There's going to be lots of terminology in math. So we have a double root at x equals 2. Or x equals negative 2, I should say. So when we graph that, we know that we have to either, we're either going to be coming from up here, and we're going to go to 2 and bounce off and go up, or we're going to come down, hit 2, and bounce back down. So the only thing we now have to figure out is what is the y-intercept. Now again, we can expand this whole thing out, but it's not necessary. The y-intercept just occurs when x equals 0. So we want to figure out what is y equal when x equals 0. So if we put x equals 0 in there, the first bracket is going to become negative 3. The second bracket is going to become 2. That's still going to be squared. And the third bracket is going to become just 1. So we're going to be at negative 3 times 4, which is 12, times 1 is 12. So we're just going to be at 12. So this is going to occur at 12. So what I have to do is go on my graph, and I'm going to just try and extend my graph a little bit here. Extend this up a little bit. And 12 is going to be right here. So I know my graph is going to go through y equals 12. The other thing that I know, or the other thing I can figure out, I should say, is whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. And if we multiplied all the x's out, we got a negative x to the fourth. So the first one became x, second one became x squared, last one became negative x, and we have this negative x to the fourth. So our polynomial is really negative x to the fourth plus a bunch of other stuff plus 12. And so the plus 12 tells us that that's where it crosses the y-axis. The negative 4 tells us that it starts down. Is it negative 12? Oh, it is negative 12. Let's change this a little bit because this is going to be negative 12. So we're going to have to extend the graph this way. Because now what we're going to do is once we have all the information, and that's the thing we're doing when we're graphing these polynomials, is we are trying to get all the information out of here so we can draw an accurate sketch. So if it's fourth degree, it, at most it's going to be three turns. It's got to go through all of those points. And once it goes through all of those points, then we'll be able to have our graph. Now we have to keep in mind that at negative 2 it does this bounce off. So now we're just doing a little sketch. Starting down, we're going to go up to 2. Negative 2, I should say. Bounce off at that double root. Go down, cross at 
y equals negative 12, through our points back down just like so. Now, we have to keep in mind that this point here, we have no idea how far down this goes. And unless you go on and do calculus in university, there is no way for us to calculate, without a graphing calculator that is, how far down this goes. So when we're doing a sketch, we just need to make sure we cross those points. And the same goes for right here. There's no way to know how high up this goes. So we're just doing a, a, an idea of how it goes based on these values.